Here's the single guiding principle that will help you get success in fitness for the rest of your life. You've probably heard us say this before. Do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. Why am I bringing this up again? Because I think we need to explain this better so that you understand why this is so important. By the way, I want to be very clear. Doing the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change is actually the way you get the most amount of change. There is no better way to do it. So follow it. Whether or not you want to get fast results or you just want to be consistent, follow it. I'm actually glad you're going over this because I feel like sometimes when we say this, that people go like, oh, okay, I get it. That's the better way, but I still still could do it the other way. The other way will be faster. That's still. right. Is That's mm -hmm. how I feel like it's interpreted sometimes they, when we say that. They <laughs> think that if you do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change, you're compromising faster results somehow. Like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. the easier. Oh, that's the better, healthier way. Right. But I still want to go the be faster yeah. way. No, it's the better, but better, better way. Look extreme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's the way you get the best results. Bottom line. Now, why? Because you're in that adaptation sweep, sweet spot. You're not pushing recovery or what you can tolerate. It's all about adaptation. It's all about adaptation. And if you go through the rest of your life focusing on that, you're always going to train appropriately, or at least you're going to get closer to appropriate than it would if you're trying to see how much you can tolerate, how much work I can handle. Um, and that just means better strength gains, better fat loss, uh, less joint pain, better mobility. It's the better way to approach it regardless of what your goal is. If you want to get there fast, slow, or consistent, it's just, it's just better across the board. You're not compromising anything is my point. Yeah. By making that, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's just really mentally challenging when you think that <laughs> fitness is this um, pursuit of all work, right? And so to be able to do a more effective job at getting better at work, you got to do more, you got to do it more intensively. And so it's just kind of like, it's 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 a really hard concept to realize that you have to work with your body, which is has all these checks and balances and balancing uh, effects to it where you have to find that sweet spot that's actually beneficial to you. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm. I'm still searching for like the perfect analogy in something else that's like that. Yeah. There's like things like I've I've used it I've used the analogy around golf before. Anyone who's golfed, uh you you think that you want to go up there and like hit swing as hard as you can yeah. to get the ball to go much further, but the irony is like backing off of that and actually swinging more properly and better connected. Like you'll get, well, that, you'll go, the ball goes 10 times further. Cause yeah. I mean, if you're just constantly just swinging all the time, like you're going to re reinforce bad patterns, which then again, your, your ball might be going further away I, from the target. I got an example. I was just watching, um, cars, the movie cars with my son. He loves that movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And part I think it's analogy. Yes. No, I swear to God, this might be actually be good. So the I think tires, I think it's part two where Lightning McQueen is like, he's cocky at this point. He's winning uh, all the time or whatever. Maybe it was part one. That was it a was less part one. good movie. It was part one. Okay. It was the first one where he's, he's, he's just going and his pit crew is like, you got to come in and change your tires. Like, mm -hmm. no, I'm going to keep going. He has the first one. And he blows his tire. Like if you watch NASCAR or formula one, they have to carefully uh, calculate and measure when to do pit stops and when not to. And you would think for someone who's not experienced, just keep going as long as you can, because you'll beat everybody who's doing the pit stops. But you end up kick, you end up losing because your car gets destroyed. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be perfect. That's the point. The point is you have to be perfect with it. And what happens, especially to people who are consistent, by the way, we communicate this so often because we this happens to us all the time. I'm going through it right now. As you continue to work out, it, you just you'll naturally trend towards doing more and more and more. It just it just starts to go that way, and you start to push up against what you can tolerate, not necessarily what's most effective. I, I always. I hate to say it, but it always surprises me. I cut the volume down, boom, better results. Boom, mm -hmm. get leaner. Boom, boom, and I always go, oh, I have to shake my head and why do I always do that to myself? You know. So if you if you keep this in the back of your mind when you're training, you're more likely to do it the right way. That's why it's such an important thing to. to I think it's I think it's hard. Uh, it's hard because one, there's not a lot of other things that are like this, and then two, it really does depend on the audience or who I'm speaking to whether I really emphasize this, right? Because yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a clear divide of people in, in the, like, you know, trying to pursue their health and fitness journey. You have one side that just can't stay motivated, aren't consistent, afraid to push themselves, right? They're just, they hate working. They're like, they're that side. And then you have the other side that's like motivated to work out, to change themselves or, or even borderline is in love with exercise and working out. And so 
if I'm talking to the group that I can't get to be consistent for one week, I'm not really worried about telling them to overreach too much because they've got plenty of room to increase intensity, volume, and everything else. But if I'm talking to the average person who's highly motivated to change themselves or already borderline addicted to fitness, then that message is extremely important. I think it's where yeah. you tend to make your excuses, I think tells you a lot. Like, do you, do you make <laughs> excuses as to why you need to work out more? Or why you need to, you know, work out so often or so hard? Mm. Or do you tend to make excuses as to why you need to skip workouts? That'll <laughs> tell you a lot, right? If you're the person that's like, hey, I can't yeah. make it to that party. I got to work out. Or, hey, you know, I know I'm on vacation, but I'm working out every day or whatever. And you're making excuses, then you're probably the person who needs to scale back a little. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're the one that's like, nah, I got to miss you. Yeah, I'm going to miss another workout. I'm going to miss this whole week. It's not a big deal. Let me miss some more. Then you're probably the person who needs to go a little harder. It's always that balancing act, right? Of of the right amount, but literally it's the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. Um, and, uh, it, that I think is, I can't think of a single better guiding principle when you think of long-term success, right? Besides being consistent or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that's helped me recently with that, and I, if those that have been listening to this show for, uh, you know, more than three or four years pre COVID, I was like the had to go work out in the gym guy, anti workout home person. And, and you guys were always the workout home is yeah. so amazing. And I'm like, no, 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 gym, gym, gym. Like, no way I work at home. Right. But once COVID hit and I was forced to work out at home, you know, on my, on my little PRX setup, I found that there was some things that I did fall in love with. And it was this piece is I, I felt like it was okay for me to go in the garage and just do one or two exercises and then mm. go back to my day and then maybe revisit again. Or whereas in, when I would go to the gym and I, if I had to drive to the gym, it was like, one, I'm only going if I know I'm going to go train. And then if I go train, I'm going to go train for mm -hmm. at least an hour or more. I want to be in there. I don't want to waste my time with one exercise mm -hmm. to go all the way over there. And so I think it limited uh, my ability to do that. We're having the PRX at home. Now I have this like, oh, okay, well, mm -hmm. maybe I'll just do two exercises today. Or, oh, I should, you know, I should scale back today. Do I really want to go all the way to the gym just to do this, you know, two or three things really light? Like, oh, I'll just skip it all together. We're now having access to the, the my gym in my garage. I find myself doing a better job at these principles. I, so I same, but for different reasons. So when I work out with just a squat rack, a barbell, dumbbells, and adjustable bench, okay, which the the... the like in here, we have two PRX setups. Um, and what's, what's cool about PRX is it folds into the wall. So for people who don't know, you can still park your car in the garage and do all that stuff. But when you pull it out, it's literally the most stable squat rack that you'll find because it's attached to the wall. Boom, anchors in the ground. But anyway, the reason why that encourages me to train properly is because I don't have 85 pieces of shiny equipment that I want to go <laughs> to and try. You. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it this way, if I gave you, if I said you can work out consistently, yeah, but you have 10 exercises to pick from, you're not going to put you're not going to put any of these machines on there. It's going to be all the best most effective exercises. Right. So, I mean, for the last probably 15 years, a majority of my workouts have been done with that right there. And they're the, they've been the best workouts and I've been working out for longer than 15 years. I've been working out since I was a kid. Those are the best workouts because it encourages you're limited me to the bangers. Yes, it yeah. encourages me to stick to the effective stuff and to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I have like all this equipment, I want to try this, I want to try that, I want to use this, let me try a little of that and I end up doing more than is necessary, which actually takes away from uh, my progress. Yeah, I noticed a bit kind of what Adam was talking about in terms of like having the ability to just go attack one or two exercises. And then I, I had to get over that psychologically of like, if I stop and I interrupt my workout, like it's not doomed, oh, right? Yeah. So it's like, everybody thinks like if, if something happens, like I can't be distracted. I have to have this devoted chunk of time to just be completely deliberate and focused and all that kind of stuff. And I finally w allowed myself to not like keep thinking in, on those lines and would go do errands, would um, be outside doing chores or like do something else productive elsewhere, come back downstairs, um, you know, do another two exercises. And I, by the end of the day, I've like completed a whole workout, but it's like, it, w it wasn't that like added amount of pressure that this is going to be like unusable. This is going to be like, not like a, an effective workout that way. You know, what's funny about that. I can't wait. There's limited data on this because uh, they really haven't done a lot of studies specifically on that. Okay, on what you're what you're explaining, but they will. I'll, I'll make it. I'll say it right here. They will, because I've experienced this. I've seen uh, clients train like this, and then Olympic athletes 
uh, have trained like this for a long time or experienced this before, and some power lifters too. If you take your workout and you, same workout, and just split it up so it's done throughout the day. So instead of doing one one-hour session, let's say you did, you know, three 20-minute sessions or two 30-minute sessions or five or six 10-minute sessions, let's just say. Not only is it, it's not the same, it's actually better. You'll find that you'll actually get more strength gains, more muscle, more fat loss by dividing the workout up. So for people who are hardcore, who love going to the gym, unless you live next door to the gym, it's try this out. Get yourself a home gym set up, basic. You don't need a bunch of stuff and try that. Try working out throughout the day. It's very convenient, by the way, too, if you have it in your, obviously in your garage, especially For if you sure. work from home. Try it out and you'll get better results than if you do it all at once. Now, the, the drawback is it's actually inconvenient for a lot of people to do it that way because they don't have it in the garage or they got to do other things. But for other people, it's more convenient. Throw all that aside, it's actually more effective. Like, try it. Try doing 10 sets of squats throughout the day versus, versus yeah. all at once or do your whole workout, split up throughout the whole day that way. Watch what happens. It's it's remarkable. Yeah, that's it's you speaking. That's you speaking to the advanced person. I think there's tremendous value too for the beginner because, you know, one of the hardest things if you've ever fallen off for a while, the 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 mental uh, hurdle or the motivation it takes to get to the gym because you know what that how hard that first workout <laughs> is. If I if I have this ability of like oh I've got it in my garage like oh I don't need to make it into this daunting real hard work. Oh, the first work I'll just go in there I'll go do two two sets of something and that's it and then tomorrow I'll do three sets of something and then the next day I'll do four or five sets of something and that ability and and uh, flexibility to be able to make that decision by having the access like that I mean I think that it, it has tremendous value for someone who's trying to I think you would think like oh a home gym you got to be pretty hardcore into working out if you want a, a gym inside your house or access to that no. where I think, no, you know what, for a beginner, I think it's as valuable, if not more valuable for building that, you know, uh, consistency. Yeah. You know, totally. I had, uh, the, the, this is when I figured out the frequency model too, back to what we're talking about in terms of like training more frequently with split up workouts, whatever the fastest way I ever got to doing like tons of put like pull-ups, like be able to do 30 pull-ups was literally doing so, uh, like some pull-ups every other hour. I'd mm -hmm. have a pull-up bar yeah. and I would just jump up and do, not to failure, nothing crazy. I would just, throughout the day, I'd do a bunch of pull-ups. Man, my pull-up strength went, it, it elevated so quickly. It is rapid strength. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Like you'll never experience the same thing. strength gains uh, as fast as when you practice that way. And I, it, I learned it from a trainer. I had this trainer that just, he bench pressed so much weight. And I thought, I didn't know that he, this is just how he worked out. I thought that he was just fooling around. But in between clients, he'd go out and do a few reps on the bench. And then he'd train a client. And all day long, he was doing this. And I thought he did that in addition to his workouts. He's like, no, that's all I do, man. And I, mean, his, his, I think it was bench like 405 or something. I was like, holy <laughs> yeah, cow, dude. For sure. That's super crazy. All right, today's program giveaway is Maps Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it and subscribe to this channel. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale right now on some workout programs. We have a beginner workout program called MAPS Starter. That's 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime. That's called the Starter Bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Hey, how was uh, your weekend? You you uh, bailed at us on the oh, party, dude, huh? Oh, dude. What's you. up? Sometimes you get, I got, we get a little overzealous with the little ones. <laughs> So we had uh, a Saturday set up where we were going to go, we were going to drive from San Jose to Half Moon Bay for my brother's son's birthday. Uh -huh. So that we would have been up there like 1030 in the morning, done the birthday thing there. And then from there, drive down to Morgan Hill to go to Max's birthday. Mm -hmm. This is remember two little kids. Okay. Naps, all that shit. You know, we're trying to schedule it all. It's never, <laughs> it just doesn't work, dude. Just tantrums already at the first party. Oh, Shit going man. down. By the time we get in the car, I'm like, you know what? We're going home, dude. There's no yeah. way I'm going anywhere else because I'm going to end up giving these kids away to someone well, else. You you missed an epic uh, bubble display. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I want Adam to describe uh, the, uh, the, so we, the bubbleologist. We hired uh, – so the things for his birthday, right? We did, uh, we did a taco guy. We did a snow cone machine, and we had a bubbleologist that oh, came there. What, a bubbleologist? Yeah. Is yeah. that a real thing? No, I think it's a made-up word. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a made-up okay. word. Although she definitely made it sound like she was yeah. educated for that. Um, so we <laughs> Katrina found this thing online. Uh, we were trying to find like some 
some cool like we were originally we were talking about having like somebody come dressed up as uh bowser knock on the door and bring like we were like let's do something kind of cool uh that the kids will get a kick out of if it's and so we were like looking at all these different things and katrina found this bubble show they make those giant bubbles yeah, and those look cool they are cool right mm -hmm. and, and i and so i told her i was like oh that that's a good idea and like the, the bunch of four-year-olds i think they're going to be all into it so it'd be great and you have all these different options on like what you pay for, and we got the the, the main package where you can uh, you have a show that like a bubbleologist comes and puts on this show for the kids, and then afterwards the kids can go bananas with all the bubble stuff, right? And so this girl gets there and heavy set lady, and you know I'm walking out to her car to help her out, and she's I'm asking her, oh, how long do you work for the company and that? She's like, oh, actually not that long. It's huge. Like there's lots of people. I don't even know half the people. I'm like, wait a second, how do you not know? You don't know anybody that works. For well, we contract right, so it's this massive company all over like the United States, and they they do these bubble shows everywhere. Interesting. And I'm assuming I didn't ask her this, but I'm assuming that you get some sort of a probably weekend course, and you get certified to do bubbles. And now basically anybody can be a contractor and do bubbles. <laughs> At least that's what it seemed like. So we get there get and we get it set up degree. all in my garage. And you know that feeling when you're listening to like a, a, a stand-up comedian who is just bombing. Oh, bombing. no. Yeah. And you're like, you are awkward. I oh, mean, like, no. I want to step in and help. Uh, you know, it's like, Ugh. oh, it was so she couldn't get the bubbles to like. What? Yeah. Every, she'd bend over. Okay. So my remember, heavy set lady, every time she bends over to get the, the bubble thing going, it would pop. She had to bend over again. Yeah. Oh, pop. No. And she's like nervously talking about why it's happening and like making excuses for it. And, you know, originally we thought, oh, maybe because there's a little bit of wind coming in. So we closed the garage. So we're in the sealed garage. There's not, a, not a breeze anywhere. We're also, we're all getting hot and dying in the garage, watching her unable to get a bubble going and going through like, and she's like got her phone for her notes on like what's next. And it was just so awkward. And these kids, they're four, right? So yeah. As soon as she would get you a got bubble, five minutes, man. To get yeah, and not only that, but it was like she was like trying to teach them like the the, the types of these three dimensional shapes. What was the real name of it and everything yeah. like that? I'm like, these kids don't give a shit about any of that stuff. Like, <laughs> give her a Tetris like every injuries. every time yeah. she would actually make a bubble, the kids, ooh ah, like yeah. the kids would be all into it. I'm like, stop talking, just make some bubbles, and these kids are gonna go insane. But instead. We had to watch like this twenty minute like just bomb session of like a presentation and a show, and it was really bad. And then finally, it was over. That sucks. And then, they, and then we took the kids to the backyard, and we had all those big plastic, yeah. uh, you know, like pools, and they yeah. filled it up with bubble stuff. Uh, and then they had all the cool was awesome. Yeah, gangbusters. And then yeah, the kids just had a needed, ball yeah. for like the next hour. They were doing their, doing own, thing. their own thing and yeah. making bubbles. Just, just oh. Let them go, dude. And that would, yeah. so that's an option. I wish we would, looking back now, so anybody who's considering doing a bubble party like we did, skip the show. I probably don't Google that. My, something else. <laughs> <laughs> get the wrong Not for adults, okay? <laughs> bubble yeah. party. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I mean, there you was know, some, You know what's interesting though? The, the science around bubble, have you guys ever, ever, ever re, yeah, okay, I know you have Justin. So he, 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 bit, he, yeah. he nods. That's, that's why I was extra cringe, yeah, with the. It's, dude, the way that they, the the way that bubbles stick together, the shapes, and there's like a crazy science around bubbles. So she was trying to teach she's that, trying, but the yeah, four year olds. Was, yeah, she was trying to teach that to these four year olds about how, how you the bubbles can attach themselves together and how if you had a string here and you moved it up yeah. it looks like it shrinks and it doesn't and uh, just i mean so it was like and now if she was teaching it and it was flowing well with her making a bubble it would be cool yeah. but she would go on this thing where she would talk about it and then she'd go to do it and then she couldn't do it <laughs> so it was like yeah. this is really bad right now just, just like but all the geometric patterns yeah. and all that it forms and it's all you know based off of like the what was it the surface golden tension and, yeah oh yeah yeah so yeah the, the fibonacci sequence and all that so it's like all yeah so there's lots of cool science that like you could have uh incorporated that but yeah for that crowd like what's the point? yeah the highlight was when justin got inside and she did a bubble over him oh, and yeah. i told him i paid him a hundred dollars he farted <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard because she was telling the kids. So what? she, she Wait, would just, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. so she she would do this thing right where she gets, she had the kids and she would she would uh, <laughs> raise it over them and then she would tell them to blow. So the kids would be inside a bubble and then blow and through the blow wall out. and then would make yeah. a bubble or yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And so Justin gets up there and I say, "Oh, bro, hundred bucks if you fart because she's behind him doing the." <laughs> <laughs> also, was she in the bubble yeah, too? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just, just I, was, I thought it'd be hilarious. Dude, Justin would double rip, bubble, dude. Rip just a like fart and would have blown a bubble like right behind me at the same time. <laughs> all of a sudden, it gets opaque. What's in the? Yeah. It's all foggy. Hundred percent. That was the, that was the highlight of the twenty minute show. Was teasing uh, teasing with Justin when Justin got in there to make the bubble, and uh, then it was like it was a, an epic. But did, did Max had a good time. Huh? Uh, he had a blast. He was it was real. I was actually really proud really of him. Cool you know, party. I've shared before. Uh, you know, with previous birthdays, how my son just gets a little overwhelmed. And we had 50 plus people at that house. I mean, it was, the it was, house was full. It was packed and it was cracking. It was loud and it was, but he had a blast, man. He did great. That's awesome. And, yeah, had a good time. And that's so awesome. Um, and exactly what I didn't want thousands of presents. You know? oh. So, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, so many toys. Literally, right? my business partners are the only ones that listen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like everybody else in the family ignores ignores what I ask. Every that's, year that's I say, typical, same thing. dude. That's stockpile typical. for my son, please. Yeah. Stockpile for my son. Just get him. You know, I don't care if you spend $5. Just fucking put some money towards his future. What about that? No. Can't toys. Can't do that. Can't do that. Hella toys. And then, and then I got like this, you know, I've got parents that, didn't do much for me as a kid, so they feel like they got to overcompensate for my son. So and they one up each other, so they're dropping like a grand on my four year old. You know what I'm saying of like toys and stuff like that. I'm just like, come on, is it all? Is all like age inappropriate? So a uh, new car, you're like, so, not gonna no, drive bro, for two my years. my dad, my my stepdad, <laughs> right? out back. My dad gets this basketball hoop for like 16 year olds. Yeah. I'm like. You think I haven't been trying to get my son to play basketball like more than anybody? You know what I'm saying? Like that's all I think about, and I'm like, I can't even get him to be interested in it. And you get a full size, ex, ex, you know, uh, you know, what you would call that goes up and down, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. glass backboard, like like the ten footer. <laughs> yeah, like, what, what am I going to do here? with this right now? At least that's, I'm so like glad. Up, like, ah. I'm so glad wifey stepped up and was just like, uh, yeah, Larry, please leave that in the box. Don't take it because he wanted to put it together. And she's like, yeah, just leave it in the box. We'll do it later. Oh. Like, like six, 16 years later. You know <laughs> <laughs> if he asked for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were at my, at my brother's party earlier that day, and my family has has uh, changed so much in the last few years because all, like my brother, my cousins, everybody's having kids. And right now, my uh, one of my cousins, his wife is pregnant, about to have one. My brother's wife is pregnant, about to have one. So it's just exploding. So the parties have changed so much. Where they used to be just like adults and like a couple kids. Yeah. Now it's all kids. Yeah. Like running around acting crazy. Moms, dads chasing around. Mm. Yeah, so account for that now and like structure it around It's fun. That. Yeah. It's hectic. It's great. But it's cool. It's totally different. Yeah. It's totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. So what led to the the breakdown with the tantrums and stuff like that? Was well, it just it, it, was, uh, it was cold. Because, okay, so... Oh, cold over there. Bro, huh? so the temperature difference between yeah. San Jose and Half Moon Bay, it's like I'm on another planet. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was it was like it 85 up there. It was 50 or 55 with wind. Yeah. So we're like cold. The babies can't sleep because it's too whatever. And I'm underneath that the heat lamp trying to help her get sleep. My two-year-old, you know, two-year-olds don't play well together. They know how to play on their own together yeah, but yeah. not play together they're like little dictators yes so like you know my son gets a car starts playing with cars well now that's the car that his cousin wants and the other yeah. little boy wants and they all start fighting over it. and the parents come over you need to share and i'm like telling them no, no no it's your kid's toy don't force them to share but if you want to take turns it's okay so then my son's crying everybody's crying then i pull him aside and then he freaks out and then i got and then I finally i like i had to like resort to like bribing him i'm like hey buddy do you want me to? I know we didn't bring you any toys. I'm sorry. Do you want to go buy a toy? He's like, yeah. yeah. So we walked out. <laughs> I walked to a store, found some toys to buy them, brought them back. But you know that helped only for a little bit. Oh, God. So, dude, my daughter, my seven month old, trip off this. Seven months old. So one of the best things that Jessica did with uh, our two two and a half year old was she taught him how to sign language before he could speak. And it's amazing because before a child develops the motor skills and coordination to form words. They can communicate. They still can communicate. Yeah, they just yeah. use signs. Yeah. So she's been doing this a little bit with Dahlia, and she can sign milk to us. And we thought it was a fluke, but no, legit, she does this. No way. Yeah, do you want milk? And she goes like this. Oh, wow. And trip. then we give it to her. And we've tested it like yeah. seven times now, which is so cool mm. that you have a seven-month-old baby, this little little yeah, chubby. Tiny, yeah. Yeah, this little chubby baby. <laughs> you think doesn't know anything. 
is communicating that she's hungry. You, it's so wild. You just brought up something that was funny for it was funny in the moment for us. You you guys will laugh because of this this point you're making. Uh, we were in the jacuzzi last night or the night before last. Uh, my my best friend and I were bullshit and talking sports and everything like that. It's like ten o'clock at night, and the the wives, both of our wives, went in the house to go uh, make something to eat. And we've been talking for like twenty minutes later. And we're like, dude, I thought they were gonna bring us food out there. And you can see, you know, from my back window, you can see the jacuzzi from the kitchen or with that. And so he's he's do, he's doing this. Oh, he's doing yeah. <laughs> the, the children's side. Yeah. So she she, she she totally does this. To her. Yeah, she's signing back. Yeah, she does this. Yeah, right back, gives the finger right back. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. I'm like, you have to be a dad, yeah, right? Yeah. Who teaches the kids sign language to think that's funny, you know? So they start cracking up. That's hilarious. The girls were talking shit. I was like, I was like dude, I thought they were going to come back in here. Like, yeah. none of us have our phones. He's like, oh, wait, you know, I'll sign it to her. So he signed you know what, Hey, you know what's funny, though? I didn't realize. Now I know with, with, the, with the baby is that, you know, how little kids, you teach them a word. And they'll say it wrong, but then that's how they say it for a while. So you as a parent know what they mean when they right, say right, right. Oh, he means water. He means food. I don't know why I didn't realize this with, with Aurelius, but it's obvious. When he was a baby, he would we teach him a sign, but then he'd do it in a weird way, and we didn't understand him because I thought I didn't realize you could, they would do that with sign language too. Yeah, of course, yeah. So for the longest time, there was this period of time where my son was doing this sign where he would go like this to his mouth. He wanted water. Poor kid, I keep giving him food. Here, here's some food. <laughs> and he's like, he'd go, ah. And I'm like, wait, well, keep telling me you want food. And eventually I figured it out. Like, this poor kid's been thirsty this whole time. <laughs> I'm giving him, give him food instead, you know? Oh, <laughs> but they'll do the same thing. They'll make up their own or they'll change it a little bit and, uh, you know, and try to do the whole thing. So, hey, yeah, off, anyway, off subject, but I was just thinking about something um, that I wanted to ask you guys if you guys knew this or not. So, we are, we are battling ants right now because of the Ooh. heat. So mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you guys mm -hmm. have got some ant stuff going on. You guys on. have pest people come? Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. So they come actually tomorrow to come uh, respray yeah. some of that. So yeah, we do that like quarterly or annually. It depends yeah, on yeah. If, how it is. And so we haven't since we've been at this place. And because um, they come out Tuesday. But in the meantime, I didn't know some of these things. You know, like raid is not a good idea. Oh, and yeah. not for like the kid reasons, but not because it's it's not effective with ants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it ant, just kills them on contact, and that's it. So so and also stomping. So I didn't know this. So I thought maybe you guys might. And if not, here's some fascinating information for you that I found very fascinating after talking to the you know ant exterminator or whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't want to use spray raid because if you spray raid, they 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 smell that chemical smell. And it puts off something that it alerts the other ants and they just move the colony somewhere yeah, else in the house. Switch it over, yeah. Same thing goes for if you step on ants. Oh, they smell you, the, the if you step chemical on, or something? Yeah, they, the they admit, yeah, they admit something. So, so the Fair move is to wipe them up with a wet towel and like flush them or run, run them down the drain or whatever like that or vacuum them up and dump them somewhere else. Well, that's funny. We'd vacuum them a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> so that they say that's a move. So don't smash them and don't spray raid, oh, which I was totally spraying raid all over my yeah, house. I don't remember what stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we there was something too that we had found that they would actually like eat it and yes. take it and they would bring it back that's to the effective. colony to get to the to the clean. They're that's like these little gel packets. That's what Jerry, yeah, yeah. Jerry suggested that. She goes, little gel packets. She also said the hack for the 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 killing and spraying is to spray Windex. Windex oh, yeah, neutralizes Windex. Mm -hmm. that that chemical release or whatever like that. And so she's like, the hack is the spray. So, so uh, we have a sandbox in the backyard, full of, you know, full of sand, obviously the kids playing, and ants Natural. got into it and yeah. some bugs or whatever. And so I couldn't use poison. What am I going to do? I can't put poison and my kid's going to go play in there. Right. So I went online and researched what to do because I didn't want to have to like throw out all the sand, buy new sand. It's a big pain in the ass or whatever. So I read on there that cinnamon hmm. um, and uh, peppermint oil. Peppermint oil, yeah. That it, it repels that. them. Uh -huh. So here's what I did and it totally works. Now I have to redo it like once a week or once every other week. But if I do this, no bugs go near the sand, the sand pit. So I bought a chemical-free... Uh, pest deterrent, which is made essentially with peppermint oil. So I spray peppermint oil around the sandbox. Then I got ground cinnamon and I mixed it with the sand. So there's ground cinnamon in there. Yeah. And then I spray the peppermint oil in the sand. And if I do that, no bugs at all get in there. Mm, Don't wow. even touch it, nothing. Now, if I wait like two, three weeks, then eventually start getting in. But then I repeat it again. And within a few hours, the bugs leave. Yeah. They don't like it. Yeah, reminds me of, it oil. reminds me of what I was. Were you? Were, did I share that on the show, or was it just us talking off air about the different plants that I said I want? Oh yeah, uh, I think I, you mentioned off. Did off I? It was air. off air, right? Yeah. So I don't think Sal heard me talking about this. 
So I saw this like crazy sp spider that I haven't seen before uh, at my house in my California room. And uh, so I right away got online of like some of the natural ways for me to look for this. And they actually have a list of like 10 different plants that like uh, repel insects, spiders, all and really? mosquitoes. Yeah. And it's all the plants that have these real potent smells, lavender, mm. basil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think peppermint was on there. There's like all these types of plants that emit those like real strong, potent smells. If you keep those in in your house or near insecticide, huh? yeah, or it's a way. It, yeah. It's a way to repel spiders and bugs. Of course, humans like it. I'm gonna yeah, spray this ooh, out this to kill. Good, yeah. It's like, hey, it's like weed. Weed produces like THC to protect uh -huh. itself from UV rays. Humans yeah. are like, smoke like, it. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, this is the best. This is great. Yeah, but it makes me think like that would be. I mean, and lavender and all those things are like good looking plants and they smell yeah. good. So like, a, an idea would be to probably pot some plants around there and it'll probably even help wow. help I'll keep that down at, more. we do have some basil and all that kind of stuff but yeah we've had a real bad mosquito problem it's been like it was a little bit noticeable like the year before but like this year is like they're kind of like gangbusters so do you have to have professionals come out and treat like well i I, I would assume like so i was looking into other products like there was uh some kid i guess some college kid that came up with this like um i don't know if it was like the electric one electric i yeah, saw that i saw that ad pod that thing you know i was like i wonder if that's legit or not and i was like is this just some good marketing um but i'm willing to look at other options because it's like the mosquitoes themselves i went all around the property and i looked at all the usual suspects with when you have like dead water, water yeah. yeah we went through and drained all that or or we would put like soap in there and other stuff to kind of like kill any larva that was in there and bleach uh but yeah so that was it like not, they're still coming i think it's from like the local creek and like some of the areas a little further than us what yeah. what um animals eat like frogs and stuff Frogs mosquitoes. will eat them. Uh, so there's some of these plants. I'm going to send the list. It was a 10, 10 plants, and they and a lot they like the lemongrass. There's a bunch of other ones that like repel mosquitoes, but all these bugs. So I'll send that over so you yeah. have that. The other thing that I've seen that helps too. This is such like a dad conversation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about weed I whackers just, next. I, know, <laughs> I just was like, it just dawned on me right now. Like, no, next is like, dude, I got this shortcut, you know, to get over. Let to me tell like, you about like, lawn care <laughs> real quick, yeah, again. Yeah, or, yeah. Like, <laughs> or a barbecue conversation. I'm like, oh my god, I'm such a loser. You guys bro. get those <laughs> shoes with those <laughs> laces. It's oh, I love dry. those shoes. It's dude, so convenient. Exactly you're talking about, yeah. uh, dude, so bad. But anyways, back to it for the other <laughs> the dads that will appreciate this conversation. <laughs> You know, the other thing that actually helps, Justin, it doesn't get rid of them, but I notice a huge difference with just having air moving. So by having to put it like an oscillating fan, mm -hmm. or if, I don't know if it's an enclosed air, wherever you're at, but just where air is moving, it's like where the air is stale and sitting still like that, they they they, they congregate like that. Whereas if, you, if you're at least blowing air in that area, they won't kind of sit in that. Well, mosquitoes so that are helps. a legit problem. They're not like, they, they carry disease for oh, sure. Yeah. So they're not, they're not like just a pest. They're a big problem. And some parts of the world, they're a major problem. Well, yeah. And now they've like created like some Frankenstein. Whatever happened to that? Part. You brought that up on the show. They like, did it. Like a year they, ago. They unleashed them. They did. In Florida, right? Isn't that uh, there's other places too. And I think there's like weird shit well, popping here's, up. Here's where my cackles come up too. Because I've heard of like some cases of malaria in Florida. Yes. And I'm like. All of a sudden. Hmm. Yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> That's not good. By the way, what are ca does anybody know what cackles are? Does it, what's a cackle? Does anybody know? Uh, I don't know. Dogs get like this like kind of Is that what that is? When yeah. your hair sticks up? Yeah, the, yeah uh, I think that's okay. what they're talking right. about. I don't know why I thought it was like <laughs> Again, I, you'd have to fact check me, but uh, <laughs> Andrew, I've find out so many We times. lost Doug, so what's, what's yeah. cackles? What's a cackle? I don't know how to spell yeah. that. Yeah, it's a C-A. Yeah. It's not cockle. No, nope. yeah. <laughs> don't look, up, don't look, don't look easily cockle. mistaken. With the cockle, <laughs> but, hey, it makes your cockles go up. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, hey, <laughs> it's better than Viagra. It's, a, it's just defined as a harsh sound when laughing. It's a harsh sound when laughing. Yeah, or the harsh laugh resembling a cry of a hen or a goose. <laughs> well, I want to see somebody who laughs like that. Totally like wrong. It's not. Yeah, it's not like an actual thing. Then I want to uh, see somebody who laughs with a cackle. Oh, oh, that's cackling. But put in the phrase, uh, my cackles are up. That's yeah. different. You're thinking cackling. I know what that is. Wait, yeah. it might be a different name that's similar. Uh, hackles? That. We're yeah, probably hackles. Maybe probably it's hackles. using it's hackles. it wrong. It's, it's, it's hackles? hackles? God damn it. Oh, it's hackles. We can't even do it right, Justin. I, I know what you meant, though. <laughs> it's, been ha it's been hackles this whole time? <laughs> yeah. I think I've said that before. <laughs> Nobody's correcting hair. me. Thank you, guys. The hair's on the back of the neck and the back of a dog. The ha hair's hackles. on the back of the neck. Yes. Hackles. Hackles. You your cackles up, bro. Cackles! 
<laughs> I, mean, we've been, I think we've all been saying that for a long time. I don't, I don't think I've ever said hackles before. Uh, Neither have I. Uh, I, I, I get angry when I say the oh, wrong thing. God. All right, okay. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take us on a turn here for a second. I was uh, listening to a podcast. You've brought this statistic up before, Adam, and I was really thinking about this, and something really dawned on me. And it might be obvious to a lot of people, but it wasn't super obvious to me until I sat down and really thought about it. So you've brought this statistic up, but does, so you probably know the answer. What percentage of all advertising? Oh, this is crazy. Goes to pharma. Yeah, yeah. What percentage of all advertising it's, goes it, to pharma? I think it's at like eighty percent, seventy percent. Oh my! So God. all advertising. I was hoping that all wasn't true. advertising money. Out of all of it, seventy percent of it comes from pharmaceutical companies. Now that by itself, you kind of hear that and you go, "Ooh, that might." I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I mean, they're big companies. Well, they make a lot of money. Think about the the content that you know affected by that because well, of bro, what's or put acceptable it in perspective to the with company. Anything of, else? Like put it in pers like match it against anything else that's advertised. Right. Nothing is in the same universe. Here's where it gets crazy. Not even close. This is where my brain was like, "Oh shit!" I didn't even think about this. Okay. Why do companies spend money on advertising to begin with? It's to influence the consumer, right? If you spend a lot of money on advertising, it's because you want to create a narrative, you want to sell your product, you want to you basically are trying to make money by advertising your product and advertising there's many many different ways to do so, but it costs money to do so. So there's that. But here's the deal. Pharmaceuticals consumers don't go buy pharmaceuticals. I can't go to the store and buy a prescription pharmaceutical Right. I can't. Right. In fact, has anybody gone shopping for pharmaceuticals besides when you go to Mexico? No. Yeah. <laughs> because it yeah. has to go through your doctor. Yeah. So who the hell are they advertising to? Doctors? Yeah. Right. Are they advertising to doctors on TV? Is there that many doctors where they're going to spend 70% of all advertising to advertise to doctors? No, it's just so no. you're aware of the name brand. So that way, too, you can either ask or if the doctor brings up, like, oh, I've heard of that. Not even close because that would be still be a small amount. Like when yeah. you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes you something, Nine out of 10 times, you're not like, well, I've heard of this other drug that also does this. Most people are like, okay, thanks, doc. I'll yeah. go get my prescription. Yeah, we trust you, whatever. Here's why, okay? All that money goes to a network and especially to a news network. If you're a pharma company and you're giving Fox or CNN or N NBC 70% of their revenue. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to share any of the bad stories about your shit. You have influence. <laughs> One, this is, Big, this is yeah. entirely... Because if you're a company, why would you spend money to it's a advertise? Way to lobby. It's a way for them to lobby. 100%. Yeah. Mm, if no, you were a company trying course. to advertise and you're, you're not even getting consumers through your advertising because they have to go through several gatekeepers like with pharmaceutical that drugs. makes way more sense. The whole point, the whole reason why they do this is because now we are funding NBC or CBS or CNN or Fox or whatever three-letter acronym news network. We control the narrative. You control them, yeah. and they are not- Even indirectly, even if you don't have any backdoor right. handshake, it's like, listen, this is 70% of our revenue stream advertising-wise. We are not going to put that story out that that- Whatever said drug just killed that you know little girl or whatever that would be Dude, an awful headline. Like, how do right. we allow this? Like every other country knows that that would be the case. There's only like New Zealand's the only other country that even allows pharmaceuticals it, to uh, uh, advertise. Here's the deal. I'm usually against uh, regulations against stuff like that, but in this case, here's why I maybe I it's would conflict support it. of interest. Well, it just. It doesn't make sense. You're advertising to who? Your consumer has to go through their doctors. Now, you guys want to spend money talking to doctors and hospitals. That's fine. We wouldn't be on, on television or the internet and stuff like that. But it doesn't make any sense unless the goal, which makes perfect sense, is to simply have influence over these networks. So when a journalist wants to go on an investigative report on this reports on these drugs or vaccines or yeah. you name it, then the network may be like, hey, why don't you not do that? Because right. they pay like everybody's salary or probably not a good idea. Or you lost your job. Shame everyone who's skeptical. Dude, I was thinking about this a lot. And I was like, holy shit, that's the only reason. I'm like, who the hell buys pharmaceutical prescription drugs as a consumer? You have right. to go through your doctor. Your doctor gives it to you. And I've never done that. I've, I've personally never done that. If a doctor prescribes me something... I'm not like, well, there's this other. I never either. I, was, I heard about this other drug. Racket, you always forget yes. the name. That's why. You, you yeah, do. I don't, know how many also... I don't know how many times I've seen like a psoriasis commercial and I'm like, oh, I got to ask my doctor about that. And by the time I, I get to him, I never remember. By the, the way, they're, they're, they're running out of names to make up. Have you yeah. noticed that? Like <laughs> yeah. a lot of these drugs. Like, I know. <laughs> 
it's just like man the, the like i feel like they just have like one of those apps that just randomly grabs like a few different letters and smashes them together yeah but but even then like uh i think i've done it a couple times where i'll ask the doctor hey i've heard about this whatever and the doctor will say well actually this is better yeah because whatever and i'm gonna you know you're the doctor so okay you know i kind of believe you or whatever so it's 100 percent to have influence over these networks and this is why Mugentis. today the largest lawsuits ever paid out were done by pharmaceutical companies yeah. who knowingly put out drugs that they knew were killing people for other reasons. And they and they and this is what they had to pay out billions of dollars for. And they continue to do this shit. Well, it's isn't, crazy. What's the isn't the uh, third largest killer too? Uh, yeah, doctors. Uh, uh, well, no, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, use drugs. You prescription, not off. Yeah. Not yeah. that's uh, what I mean. Black prescribe, prescribed drugs. Yeah. That's what I meant. Right? That's right. So that's the third largest, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's crazy. I know, Cancer, right? heart attacks, and then yeah, drugs. So, I know it's crazy. So, that's so. Wild. So it's it's again it's uh the the counter to that is these like class action lawsuits, which can take a long time, you know, to kind of build up. And what happens if you're here's why this is important for people listening right now. If you have, uh, like, let's say you have a million people all using a particular medication, and let's say it's a, let's say it's a heart medication. I'm just gonna make up a scenario. It's a heart. It's a. It's for, uh, you know, for cholesterol or to improve your blood lipids or whatever. And you notice that your eyesight is kind of getting worse. Just some random thing. You may not connect it to the drug. You're getting older. This is kind of weird. My eyesight's getting worse. It's like this doesn't make any sense. But now imagine if that's you and you're watching a news channel. And the news channel is like doing investigative reporting. Hey, all these people who are taking this drug are reporting this very strange symptom. Well, now you're going to connect the dots and people can start connecting the dots and things get figured out much sooner before it, like a class action lawsuit or something crazy would need to happen. But that wouldn't happen because these companies, uh, these, these networks are reluctant to even pursue uh, these stories because yep. that's how they make their money. That's it. I know, dude. I was tripping when I was I wonder how cut their funding just like that. I wonder how many times too it's like a, a a bit of a double-edged sword too though even for the pharmaceutical company like they now they've now they're in bed with this uh network and now they are they better keep paying because if they don't pay and then as a network you might decide to start telling all those That's stories right. <laughs> right so it's like it's a game once we once we once we shake we shake on this deal that we're we're going to be pumping this much money it's like we're in bed with you for for the long haul because I easily could do that. Like, oh, you advertise for a year from, oh, now that we're not advertising anymore, we're going to tell stories all about all your shit for the last year or so. It's a game, dude. But 70% is <laughs> a lot. Oh, I, when I saw Massive. that, I, I saw And that I bet you it's more for news networks. That's 70% total. But I bet if you go to news networks, it's closer to 80%. What was the stat mm -hmm. that I just shared with you guys that Dr. Cabral shared? Oh, the glyphosate. That was crazy oh, to me. Oh, man. What was it, 87%? Yeah, of children a urine huge tested urine. had glyphosate in it. Yes, yeah. dude, it was over. I, I think know. it was over eighty percent. I believe it was eighty percent. It's everywhere, man. I know. You know what sucks about eighty-seven percent? Yeah, so it was right here, glyphosate was found in eighty-seven percent of children tested. Yeah, they tested like six hundred something random kids or whatever like that, and eighty-seven percent. Now you can reduce your exposure by eating uh, only organic foods and stuff, but the problem is, is that this uh, glyphosate. This is what they spray on GMOs, right? To it's kill so pervasive, plants. though. Yeah, it's it's water soluble, so some of it gets back in the air and then rains down. Yeah, and so you'll see it. And this is why when you buy organic. <clears throat> foods or supplements, you don't just want them to be organic. You also want them to be tested to be glyphosate residue free. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see that? Level. Did you guys see that um, that laser tractor for pests? I did. So how does that work? Uh, dude, I was watching a video on it real briefly before we had it started. It just lasers. I don't know who, who posted about it. I can't remember. Let's who. have some detective sensor like, detect. Because how would it like to... You know, delineate what the movement? creature, yeah, the movement maybe or the movement or something, or maybe shape the, of something. Maybe the laser itself is not hot enough for something to kill uh, the plant, but it but it a does, bug, it does kill the bugs. I mean, I, I don't know how the, the video well, I saw kill look critters or does it just kill bugs? I think it was bugs. Yeah, I think it's bugs. I don't think it does like I don't know if it does pests like uh, rodents or oh, okay. stuff like that. That would be wild. Because then that would make sense. There's no way it can kill a laser that kills a rodent, but it doesn't kill Dude, a plant. I, how cool would that yeah. be if you had a, a, a robot laser killing uh, like rats and shit in your property? Yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine it's a, a healthier way to mitigate the pest. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see what. Uh, yeah, I'd love it if it worked. Yeah, because you could minimize chemicals. Maybe, exposure. Doug, you could look that up. Laser, is it pesticide? Yeah, laser, do, pesticide. Yeah, yeah, laser tractor. pest, room, you know, crop. Laser pest crop removal. I'd say something yeah, like that. Google to that. see how it works. I did see the video though. It looked pretty rad. 
Yeah. It was just driving over the plants and just zapping everything. Uh-huh. Huh? I know. I didn't know if that was like a uh, manufacturing. You don't know if anything's real anymore, right? It's like, like I, AI, I, yeah. I watch a video now and like <laughs> I always pump my brakes before I get too excited. I'm like, well, this could be totally manufactured. Who knows if it's even a real video? No. Like, is this crap? Just like going to space. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is real. That's very real. I could have swore. Listen. Oh, God. Stop. Don't, don't We're not going to go off on a tangent. I, 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 just, I had to throw a jab in there. I promise this won't last longer right than now. 30 seconds. Oh, okay. God. We have it recorded. I'm almost positive you said. Trips to the moon, not yeah. just I did, space. I did say that. Okay. Yeah. I, right. What All I right. said, what I said was that they already had that going on. Like I made the bet about space, but when I that, thought I, the bet was it to moon. No, yeah. there no. wasn't. No, because I I brought up a story I that it was. Too. It was <laughs> we haven't all recorded. We can find it. I thought the bet was people will make trips to the moon. To the moon. Before to a robot it. washes dishes, right? Not just space. Yeah. Anyway, we'll find it's, out. It's fine. I know everybody's rolling their eyes right yeah, now. Yeah, Not again. Yeah, 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 All right, we're done. We just want to read that. Did yeah. you find it, Doug? I'm, I, there's stuff here. I'm just trying to find the exact uh, thing that you're re- who referencing. Did you know, do you know who posted it? I don't remember who it was nah, that, that posted. You shared it. it. Someone shared it. Anyway, let's let's talk real quick about something that's gone viral. Did you guys see this whole thing with Jonah Hill and his ex-girlfriend? No. Yeah, no, I haven't no, seen this. Okay, so so this is so I don't know, man. This is kind of weird. Okay, so Jonah Hill's ex-girlfriend posts uh, a a a bunch of tweets that Jonah Hill sent her. And she said he was, um, he did emotional abuse to her. He was a narcissist, um, like a narcissistic sociopath. Uh, And she posted the tweets between them. Okay. Mm. Now, here's the deal. That's what it was. A narcissistic misogynist. That's what she called Uh. it. Okay. Now, I read the tweets and I'm like, uh, they don't sound... Like, they sound kind of, like, fine. They sound okay. Now, I don't know the relationship. There could be a lot of other stuff going on. But basically, he said to her, like, so she posts, she's a surfer. She posts pictures of herself surfing and this and that. And he says, um, he goes, uh, I respect your love of surfing, but I respect myself as well. And your love of surfing and being in those situations, a lack of awareness or not mutually exclusive. This isn't me. I have my own issues I own. If you want marriage and family, you can't use the 25 card. Step up and cut shit. These people don't get your time uh, or your kindness or the sacrifice of mine. And then he gives her like, look, this is what I want. He goes, this is plain and simple. If you need to be able to surf with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee, I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it, and there will be no hard feelings, but these are my boundaries uh, for a romantic partnership. That's what he texted her. <laughs> that's and that's what, what she <laughs> posted. As She posted toxic. that. As, you know what's bad is that she posted that as toxic and bad, and <laughs> that's not bad at all, right? And that's like a, like we're, we might have to break up type of conversation. Yeah. So It seems pretty like respectful he's just establishing and like, yeah what he's looking for I, I mean, yeah, now like I imagine he's communicating this, well what he's now the this, argument is part of why this went viral is it because it is not bad and everybody's lighting this no girl up? there's arguments on both sides wow so some people are like so she, he met her when she was this surfer posting pictures of herself in her bathing, bathing suit and stuff yeah. and he he went into her DMs and flirted with her sure and so people are like what a hypocrite he liked her then but not now and I'm like well hold on a second he liked the single girl doing that stuff, right. but if they're going to get serious and get married, yeah, now you it act. Doesn't work in and that's a relationship. Very, that's very. Um, that's totally reasonable. Like there's a way you act when you're single and whatever, and then there's a way that you act when you're with a partner. So to me, that's still reasonable. I don't know. People were saying it's controlling, but I'm like, it's not controlling if you give them the option. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know, he's just man. basically saying I'm out if if you don't want to do it that way. Yeah. It's so how is that controlling? I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it. That's what you get for fucking around with a 25 year old, too. Yeah, how old yeah, is he? Yeah, he's yeah. our age, isn't he? Our age? I think so. Yeah. Do yeah. we do What are you doing with a 25 year old, dude? Yeah. Come on. She's like, he's so controlling. He's a he's a narcissistic oh, misogynist. He's, now, he's, we don't know behind the scenes. He may be, you know, really clever with that, but based on those texts, right. I was like, why are people trying to. Why if are we're just basing that? it off of that, that sounds pretty rational. It sounded very yeah. rational to me. Yeah. You yeah. know? I don't know. Well, it's weird. It's weird how people are. Are mad about that kind of stuff. Did you see the? I saw uh, a little video and clip, but I didn't see any response from the internet. I saw uh, Trump was at the UFC fight, and I saw the like infamous handshake that he did with him, where it looks like he's like 
trying to get him on, trying to get Joe to bring because Joe's refused to put Trump on the show, right? Is that? He? Is, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I, I heard. I, I thought I heard that that Trump has wanted to get on his show for a long time, and, and I think initially he was entertaining the idea of it, and then yeah, I've heard him say he doesn't really want to enter, want to do that. As far as I've I don't heard. think he to me that would I would be the most viewed oh, of show course. of all time. He doesn't Joe doesn't care though, right? He's already the Oprah of, of podcasting or whatever. I think that it I would be great be to hear a debate open podcast form, like but him and Biden or him and whoever's gonna run. Like I think that would be in, interesting as shit that is and and uh mediated by Joe. That would be awesome. But just giving Trump the platform for an hour I mean, and a half. I don't know. Like it, if if it's long form like that, you, you have to get through all of yeah. your one liners yep. and all of your like well, I, Okay, so if you're an anti Trump guy, you should be pro that because then you're yeah, you, you should talk be able your to, way through everything. Yeah, he hopefully you'd be able to poke holes in all of it. But I actually think it would work in Trump's I favor. still stand by my, my theory. I think that he's the the uh the the best chance the Democrats have at winning yeah. and they really want trump yeah. to win the primary and they've resurrected him as such they want him to I run see that because he will win the primary because he's got such a strong base he is very unlikely to win a general because people hate him so much so many people hate him so i think that they want him that's what i think yeah I mean, I they think... want him to win the primary so at what point Sal, do we see? we're not that far away so at what point will we hear like the uh, the official who's all running a lot of people wait till uh, I didn't realize they wait this long. Yeah, they do because if you're the front runner now, yeah, you've explained this. You they, get attacked. They, they come early. after you right away. Yeah, right like right. DeSantis was like way up high, but because he was way up high and people knew he was going to run, they've been attacking him. He's fallen quite a bit. Yeah. So if you look at like presidential elections, the the for, the the initial like leaders tend to fall off as the election. That's why there's that what they call the October surprise. You know, right before the election where they drop a bomb and there's not enough time to like counter it and it influences. It's all about timing. Yeah. They, they've, they've spend billions of dollars on perfecting this, the, the manipulating tactics. Wow. Of well, politics. just seeing you showed me that one campaign video DeSantis put out. That one was powerful. That was, that was really powerful. I was like, wow. They, I didn't watch it. I should have watched really it. It was about pissed, tug on the emotions of people. It was about pissed yes. off moms. Uh, oh, they're coming for your kids type of deal. Oh my God. It was oh like, Fire! I'm like, that is crazy. That is effective political. It's very effective. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did you just happen to watch it on the uh, like on TV, or did you see? No, it's but it was trending on Twitter. Uh, Yeah, and I watched it and I listened to it. I'm like, ooh, if you get (coughs) spicy, if you can like, um, you know, rally moms, oh, you're done. Because yeah. they are the organizers. You get sure. moms to really, really. I would imagine they're probably a big base of the bo- voting too. I would think they are, but it's it's more about if you can rally moms together. Yeah, they're vocal. Uh, they, about their kids. They get together. They pick it. They family. They'll organize. They will organize. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You don't fuck yeah, with, yeah. The, they're with the, 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 the ones out on the street. Like, that's what, a base hey, that'll crush. What, what do you guys are you guys paying attention right now? The the threads versus Twitter. Are you guys no. watching this? No, I mean, no. I, no. Like, oh, I know they had like so many. Yeah, bro, they had like for sure. They but... had like record downloads. Oh, millions. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I think it was like seventeen million, like instantly. No, like, they, they were maybe more. Than last that? time I checked, more. there were fifty million or something. Yeah, like something huge. Well, I, uh, see, look it up for us, Doug. Right now, look I think at a hundred million. Now, yeah. Now here's the thing, what? though. Yeah. Now here's the thing, though. It, it because it was a one click thing from Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But it's gonna the 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 proof will be in the mul- the, the repeated usage, usage and mm-hmm. and that. Did you see Elon? Have you seen Elon's tweets, bro? I didn't think I could like him anymore. It, tell me he, that one was real in regards to what I'm talking about or something the, else. The Zuck is a Zuck is a cuck. <laughs> that suck he he cuck. literally wow. did he really tweet that because I he did. I laughed for a while. Well, now he's just building up the fight, right? So 100 million <laughs> signups in the first week. Yeah, totally that right. is insane. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Bro, did you hear what I said, though? Elon yeah, literally tweeted, I That's... Zuck is a cop. I mean, th- at this point, it's... <laughs> what? Wait, who does that, bro? Well, I mean, it, it goes it's back so to funny, what I, we talked about before, and I'm Hold like, this, this is all self-promotion, right? This uh-huh. is all. That's what this is all about right now. You have yeah. two guys that are battling. Now they're actually literally battling companies, like heads right. up. It's, it's I mean, a direct Twitter, shot. Threads is literally a almost a carbon copy of Twitter, which oh, I actually yeah. heard there's some lawsuits involved, right? I'm now sure, I'm too. sure there is. Too, it's so it's like, similar. it is a direct shot across the bow at Twitter, and so I'm really interested to see what this does. I mean, that's got to be uh, pretty threatening for sure. for Elon to see to see them come out with a product that is that close to Because casual uh, user, they're not going to move 
from that platform that they use probably the most. So to have that as an option, I could see. I mean, there's power in that for sure. I, I've already I've already posted on Threads more than I posted on Twitter, and I've had my Twitter account for I don't even know how long, right? Well, and, so and it's just it is nice because we we and it obviously we're unique. Like we're mostly on Instagram, and so I'm already on that platform, and it's an easy connection, mm -hmm. and it speaks to Threads easily, so I can bounce back and forth. So I don't know, man. Well, it's, so they already I mean, said. I like Twitter, but I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm scrolling through his tweets because there's some other, he calls him Lizard Boy and like he talks <laughs> shit about, bro. Yeah. Like he knows how to talk shit is why I like yeah, so much. It's, it's so funny, funny dude. Um, he, okay, so Threads already said that they're going to focus more on like culture and like, you know, popular culture, what's happening in media, and they're going to down, whatever they call it, down regulate or reduce the visibility of political and serious. Uh, so they're going to censor. So they're trying to make a like entertaining, fun Twitter, whereas Twitter is is uh, it's still the place where you're gonna go be controversial, say what you want, type of deal. That's they're purposely doing that. Yeah, I mean, so what do you think? Do you think that's a smart strategy? I think it's a pretty smart strategy. I think it's a smart strategy. I do think uh, it's interesting how I feel like I don't. This is obviously I don't know if this is true, but Zuckerberg did say, and it has been revealed that the government did have some influence over Meta and what they did. I feel like he's their little butt, their little boy. And they're telling him like, we got to take out Elon. Let's do this. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, type of deal, and make make a copycat, and then, you know, we got to crush him that. And way. then we'll protect you. Yeah, like that it would be wild to see what happens with these lawsuits. Because didn't they have? Didn't they like recruit a bunch of like Twitter people over? And they had all these. They had all these like personal stuff. Twenty on. engineers yeah. made threads in nine months. Wow. Nine months. They boom, spit it out, and wow. it's ready to go. I know. Crazy. Right? It's crazy what, what they can yeah. what they can do now. I mean, I like it. I'm just, I mean, I'm not a fan of Zuck and I'm I like Elon better, but as far as the platform is concerned, I like the Threads platform right now. Mm -hmm. I I do. I just like the it's I like more the, like what? I haven't seen I haven't it. used it's it. It's just like Twitter. It really it's not that much comment. different, but the fact that I use Instagram so much and it communicates. Is it easy? Oh. Now, uh right. our our friend uh Brett, right? Uh Johnson was talking about that it's really um it's like he thinks it's going to cannibalize uh, Instagram because oh. it's basically you're not really getting new people to do anything. You're just kind of moving them you're from sh one. Keep shifting them. Yeah, yeah. You're just moving them from one platform or uh, to another or th th of the same for the same company. Mm. So it's not really like growing the business anymore. So it'll be interesting to see what it does for Meta in yeah. in, in general and like what's happened to their stock? Has it gone? It, it has to have gone up since all of this. I haven't looked at I haven't looked at the stock more. Actually, I because a hundred million. I mean, that's a, a that's pretty. Well, crazy. wasn't Reels supposed to be the competitor to like TikTok, right? I mean, in in a sense, and is that taking any business away from TikTok? So I think okay. So Gary V talked about this, and I thought this was an interesting point. He said like, and this was like directed towards YouTube, Facebook, all these companies. Like, what this he said, what this highlights to him more than anything else, because that was back when it had only seventy million. Now it's over hundred million. Is like that these massive platforms with these massive audiences have an opportunity to have market share in all of these. Like, mm -hmm. why? Like, you may as well just have it. Like, mm -hmm. YouTube should have a Reels, a Twitter, and a like uh, an Instagram type mm -hmm. of of that. Because if there's people that just subscribe, yeah, they kind of do. They have YouTube Shorts that are basically right. And so TikTok. I think that's his point was, you know. It, it, everybody should i mean that's what this should teach you as a company is that listen it's like you if you have a built-in audience that big there's no reason for you not to have all those yeah the stock is way up oh wow it's definitely way up yeah that's pretty cool hmm. hey um uh, i'm gonna again take, take another turn here a little update on the uh peptide bpc 157 and the kpv that i've been trying for for yeah. gut health yeah, well, yeah you're taking the pill form right pill yeah, form for gut health too. and i know i am definitely noticing some really? positive effects and i found and i looked up more studies do you know that they're studying it for anti-ulcer potency and for CNS disorders like uh, multiple sclerosis because of its connection to the gut? Wow. Yes. Um, pretty wild. Sick. BPC also does this, upregulates receptors for growth hormone in your connective tissue. Hmm. So it literally, uh, that's one of the ways it accelerates healing in some of those hard to heal areas because it upregulates the receptors where growth hormone attaches. Huh. Pretty wild. It's it's really crazy stuff, man. Yeah, like, like the potential of BBC, like, uh, and its healing effect uh, all over the body. I mean, there's just so many applications. For yeah, it. but I have been using it pretty consistently now for maybe four weeks, and it was kind of the slow, gradual process. But my gut is like 
like way more resilient right now. And it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's from that. I'll yeah. Keep, I've been on it reporting. for maybe three weeks. So, okay. and I've, I have noticed a, a better response in terms of my, how my gut's been reacting. It was like really volatile for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I was getting it tested with Cabral's team and everything. And so it was like, I'm still like working through that process of trying to like carve back at the uh, overgrowth. Yeah. Speaking of uh, gut health and stuff. So uh, Paleo Valley's bone broth, I've talked about their chocolate, how it tastes good and how I can take it super often. It doesn't affect my digestion because it's easy to digest. So I've been doing this thing now where I'll do with every meal, I'll have a scoop or two of the uh, bone broth just as a, as a way to boost my protein. And it's such an easy way to boost protein. And I notice no negative. So literally with every meal, I'll have one or two scoops of it. And it, boom, instantly adds 15 to 20 grams of protein to every meal. And I'm like, what an easy way for people to boost their protein rather than taking just it right separately. over your rice and meat. No, and, I don't put uh, it on it. <laughs> I <drink laughs> just it. pour it on there. Gross. No, just every meal because it's so easy to mix. So thin. Too. It's so thin, easy yeah. to mix. It tastes super good. And just drink it with your meal or right afterwards. And it you've just bolstered, you know, your meal with another, like I said, 15 to 20 five grams of protein. I see so many people posting about that now. I swear to God, you, got so, good. Yeah, you got so many people on that. It tastes so, good. Dude. It's, it's the best taste. You tried it, right? Yeah. Finally. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Am I wrong? Am no, I right? no, you're right. I it's told good. you. No, it's fire. All right. I, uh, shout out today. Uh, I just, since I just mentioned his name, I just want to shout out because I actually, since we've met, uh, you know, we, we get to meet so many people with the interviews and stuff like that. And I bring up every once in a while when I meet somebody who I, I really like and I stay in mm -hmm. contact with. And uh, uh, Brett Johnson. So if you do not follow Shaleen He's Johnson's so husband, he is fucking a riot. He's super smart. He drops a lot of like uh, financial stuff. So I love that he taught, he, he openly shares a lot about their business, how they make money, how he invests money. Um, and he's hilarious, he's sarcastic as shit. He's a cool guy. Like he's been a great follow. So if you're not following Brett, make sure you follow him. And I, I think it's just his, his full name altogether. So I'll look up the handle so you have it, uh, Doug, for our notes. Organifi makes organic supplements to improve your health, wellness, and athletic performance. One of my favorites is Peak Power. This is a natural uh, pre-workout formula with natural caffeine and other botanicals to give you balanced, strong, hyper energy. It's phenomenal. I love it before my lifts, and I also like taking it before creative endeavors. I don't get the same crash I get with other pre-workouts. Um, but it's also strong. You just feel like you're on fire. It's awesome. Go check them out. Check out some of their other products as well. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Bria from Canada. Hi, Bria. How can we help you? Hi. I, first off, I just want to say thank you for uh, answering my question. Um, it's been a pleasure listening to you guys. It's really, it's really nice to hear men actually be men and how you talk about like your relationships and your parenting. And then on top of that, all the fitness stuff. So just wanted to say thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thank you. but my question is, um, to do with reverse dieting. So a little bit of background. I've been working out mostly strength training for like 15 years. Um, but I've never actually done a reverse diet. I've definitely done diets. Um, but I typically eat carnivore. So like 90% meat. So my question is, how do you reverse diet if you're mostly eating meat? Like I'm, I'm like 90% meat and dairy and then like 10% periphery, which is just like pickles and sauces really. So I don't know where to go from here in order to reverse diet. Do I add carbs? Do I just eat more of what I'm already eating? So just looking for your take on that. Can I ask, can I ask first uh, why, why the mostly carnivore diet? I feel best on it. Um, it's easy. It's easy. It's so easy for me. Um, I, like I've gone through phases. Like I typically eat low carb in general, like even when I'm not eating more so carnivore, like, and like, I think low carb would be like less than a hundred if I'm just kind of intuitively eating, not tracking and just, you know, not, uh, avoiding carbs. But 
recently, like around April, I was like, okay, I'm listening to these guys. I'm going to focus on protein and water. That's it. And then I kind of naturally just fell back into eating a carnivore type diet. Digestion wise, it feels good. I don't have to think. So if I'm tracking and cutting or maintaining whatever, um, it's easy, but then it's also easy to eat on the go and eat meat and everything's good. So yeah. you don't, you don't have like a, a, a reaction or anything to rice or sweet potato or yams or things like that. You just have gravitated towards the carnivore diet. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't typically eat gluten or like any kind of processed carbs. Um, but no, so no, no adverse reaction. Well, you said, you said you feel best. I want to dive into this a little bit because, um, it, it's a pretty extreme diet. Okay. Um, the one that you're describing and you said you feel yeah. best. So I want to dive into that a little bit because there are people that feel best on a carnivore diet, but oftentimes, if not all the time, there's an underlying mm -hmm. root cause that's going on. That's not being addressed. So what do you mean by you feel the best? And you, you mentioned digestion. What are you talking about? Uh, so I went, I did eat here for a while, but I found when I ate veggies, I was getting bloated. I felt like, um, mostly bloated and just like digestive distress. Uh, when I, like if I eat, uh, processed carbs, I feel like heavier, bloated. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like that's, that's kind of, I, I do, um, take seed probiotics because I do obviously have gut issues. Um, but yeah, like I don't, I don't have any bloat or anything like that when I'm, eating this way. Have you ever been tested for um, di any dysbiosis testing, like mm -hmm. looking for things like SIBO, SIBO. or SIFO? Mm -hmm. Okay. You no, have, I've never had any gut testing. I, I think that you need to because, so here's what happens when somebody like you feels bloat or digestive distress from eating some carbohydrates, okay, or starches. They're, uh, they tend to feed certain types of bacteria and not eating them will make you feel better if you have, uh, let's say, bacterial overgrowth or some dysbiosis, but you're not solving, you're not really solving the problem. You're kind of moving around the problem. And although you feel best right. this way, the best you would feel would be if you would address the root issue. Like if you have SIBO, uh, what you're doing right now would be a Band-Aid. I, I, I did this for years myself until I was able to address the, the root issue. So you do feel better than you would if you didn't treat the SIBO and you ate carbohydrates, but you would feel best in all aspects, uh, including athletic performance, if you were to treat the underlying root issue. So I think it's uh, I think the um, it would be super valuable for you to see a functional medicine practitioner and get some gut testing to see what the root issue is. I mean, when I say super valuable, I mean life changing valuable in terms of. Mm -hmm. strength, performance, energy, hormones, skin, hair, everything. It would really be life-changing. That being said, okay, that being said, all reverse diets ultimately look the same. What you're doing is you're, you're increasing calories over time. Now, should it be proteins, fats, carbs? Well, if you're not hitting the ideal protein targets for muscle building, which is around a gram of protein, per pound of body weight, then I would tell somebody to focus on protein. Eating the way you are, you're probably eating beyond that. So mm -hmm. you could just eat more of what you're eating to do a reverse diet. But I can't stress this enough. Um, uh, go Work with a functional medicine practitioner and get some gut testing because something's going on. There's a reason why you uh, experience some of the distress that you experience when you eat carbohydrates or starches. And if you don't address that, it's just always going to kind of be there. By the way, over time, <coughs> even on a carnivore diet, uh, even not necessarily feeding those bacteria, it often continues to get worse. And what, what you may find, and this is oftentimes what people find, is their diet gets more and re more restrictive. So somebody goes keto, then they go mostly carnivore, then they go purely yeah. carnivore, <laughs> then they can't even put pepper on their steak anymore, and it's just salt and meat. And then at some point they even experience um, issues there. Yeah, I, I would I would add a couple things too. So one, uh, yes, you could just increase your calories uh, through more more meat. That's really hard to do. I yeah, mean, one, really one of the hard. one of the reasons why I, I abandoned the yeah. keto, keto diet a couple of years yeah. ago was 
I was trying to actually do a bulk, which is in the same thing as reverse dieting, right? I'm trying to add calories and build, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't keep up with the calorie intake that I needed to do, <clears throat> which was great for dieting and staying lean. So I found the value probably the same way that you did. So for reverse dieting purposes, I thought it was really, really difficult to do that. So I'm not a big fan of trying to do that through carnivore diet. The other thing is, and I agree with Sal, like I think that going through the testing is just like, that's just a, something you should do. It's just, I think everybody should do that. Even if they, I think people feel good should do that. I think it's just a good baseline to see kind of where you're at. So I think there's tremendous value in that. I also have had a lot of success with clients being able to still do things like rice and sweet potato and yams and foods like that. Like staying away from maybe the starchy foods that are like a higher glycemic index or sugary foods, like those types of things I see disrupt or cause more problems. So that's also an option is to try and reverse and add those types of carbohydrates. But again, I think we're, we're all probably going to say the same thing that it's, it's worth getting tested to get the root cause of what's going on. Yeah. Are you in our, um, functional, um, medicine or, or health forum on Facebook? No, I'm not in anything. I just have a couple of programs as well. Okay. So it's a free forum. Uh, the name of it is uh, MP holistic, health. MP holistic health. It's a group go on there. You can ask questions. There's functional medicine practitioners that answer questions for free. And then if you find that you want to work with one, which I think would be very, very valuable, I can't stress this enough, um, then yeah. work with them. This is Dr. Cabral's team, yeah. and um, it, it'll be life-changing. It'll be absolutely life-changing to be able to eat a, a wider variety of food and to uh, realize the benefits of them. I mean, athletic performance alone uh, will explode because you'll be able to eat and assimilate these types of foods. And again, if you don't, figure out what the root issue is, what'll happen over time is you're going to find that you're going to have to restrict more and more mm -hmm. and more of the foods that you eat become foods that you can't eat. So, and that's not necessarily a sustainable yeah. path. Yeah. Getting closer to a real diagnosis in terms of like, what's really like why you're reacting the way you are. I think it'll just give you that, that knowledge base. So that way when you get to those yeah. ruts and those plateaus, because right now it feels good to just stick with meat and I can totally like identify and understand, relate with that. Um, but to be able to, again, add calories, that's a really difficult place. Uh, if you're just going to stick with meat, uh, as your, as your base yeah. for all that. So, um, yeah, to, to get that specific information is going to be really helpful. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely something I'm going to do. All right. All perfect. Right. Do it. And then give, follow up with us because um, I'll be very interested to see what the results are. But I suspect that there's some dysbiosis going on that's just going untreated. Yeah, I like me. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. When the, the, the look of, uh, oh man, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just, just add cheese. That's yeah. what I was going to say. It's great. Yeah. You should have done It's a good compliment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, the old way of handling gut issues, and I was a part of this, was uh, avoid the foods that bother you. Okay. And then you have this list of foods that bother you. And then what happens is, oh, it looks like these foods now start to bother you. And over time, it's like, oh my God, I have like five foods left. Oh no, now I have yeah. three foods left. What the hell is going on? And when I finally uh, treated myself for SIBO, it was like uh, like a light bulb. Like, oh my God, like this whole time, right? there was an issue there that um, I was just, you know, kind of putting a Band-Aid over. Yeah. Um, and again, once you solve it, you solve it. That's the thing. You can solve it. Oftentimes, you could solve the issue. Well, it's like she found her first answer, right? Like, this is where I feel good right now, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, And so it's like hard to... I guess, pursue other means in terms of like coming back to incorporating other foods in there, because this is like kind of like the safe place now. Uh, so, you know, it's going to take some work to, you know, really uh, figure out and diagnose like what's going on. But once you do, it's just like, then I just feel like at that point now you can, you can bring back sort of the balance. Yeah. I think once you get to a point where she starts to notice the foods that, that, um, make her feel uncomfortable and the foods that make her feel good, I think that's still important information. Then you go solve it. Like you're saying, Sal, the thing that I see that happens a lot to people is even the people that go and solve it, 
Then they reintroduce those things that caused it from the beginning, and then and they feel okay the first few times. It's and like they overdo oh. it, and then they overdo yeah. it, and then it's they're back there again. And then and what they end up doing is like, oh, that didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. no, I have to stay here. <clears throat> no, yeah. here's a rule of thumb: is this is having one or two foods um, that bother you is somewhat normal. A whole category of a macronutrient that bothers you, not normal. So it's like I can't eat carbohydrates. Okay. Something's going on here. I can't eat any fruit. I can't eat any vegetables. Like, right. okay, something's going on here. But if it's like, oh, bread bothers me, but I can eat rice and okay, well, you know, and it might be something in the bread. It might be it's the a bit more reasonable. That's yeah. right. That's right. So if if that's you and you're noticing like like just entire categories of foods and macronutrients, or if it continues to pile up, that you find over time more and more foods going that I can't eat this list then there may be an underlying cause. Yeah, unless you have some real clinical diagnosis. That's it's right. like, yeah, I have to stay here, then that's different. So our next caller is Whitney from Canada, and she also has a young companion here. Hi, Whitney. How can we help you? Hi, guys. This is Charlotte with me. Hi, Hi Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> How you Long going? Almost about seven years, and she's nine, so that means since she's been two. Yes. Wow. Okay. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know so, uh, real quick, she must Charlotte. Be brilliant. Who's your favorite host? Is it Justin, Adam, or me? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means see, she is smart. She's like answer politically that. correct. Yeah. Wow, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> Doug's the favorite. Oh, oh yay! Oh, <laughs> winner. <laughs> All right, turn off the camera. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Whitney. Okay, so I wrote down my question. So uh, you guys have it, but I'll read it through here. Basically, I have been following your program for about the past two, three years now, anywhere from starter, anywhere, um, anabolic performance, strong, power lift, all of those. I've run them all the way through. And right now, just given life factors, being crazy busy and trying to manage stress and whatnot, I find that I don't have that much time in the gym. So I haven't got 15, but what I've been doing is taking say anabolic and turning it into like a seven day a week program where sometimes I'm just going in and if it's only squats I can do, that's all that I'm doing, but I'm being really consistent. Um, and to be entirely honest, I am like a five by five girl. I, I don't love the high reps. I, I hate it actually. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I just can't get into it, yeah. but I did it take the program because you always say to go through the program all the way through first and then I've made modifications but I'll get through a couple phases say in one program and then I'm like oh, I really want to jump into phase two of performance and then from that I'll want to jump into power lift and back and forth is it okay for me to be doing that do you have any suggestions should I just bite the bullet and 15 is the way that I should be going or my ultimate goals are leaning out a little bit more and I'd like to chase my old strength goals. That would be just like in the back of my mind, a fun type of thing to do. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah, Whitney, don't jump from program to program. Extremely dangerous. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. There's, 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 there's Your absolutely nothing. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You're doing great. You're right so now. consistent. Um, you've been following our programs for a while. It sounds like, you know, your body, pretty well. I can see that you're obviously fit. There's nothing wrong with that. Following a program fully is probably ideal. And I say probably because there's a lot of individual variants from person to person. You've been working out for so long. If you're pretty in touch with your body, you know what works for you, then you're probably going to train yourself better than our programs that are written for a general audience. Now, that being said, I want to ask you about the higher reps because you hear this <laughs> from people for two different reasons. One, they just don't like higher reps because of the way they feel. Or two, they tend to feel more exhausted and overtrained with the higher reps. So I want to ask you, which one of those is you? Is it because it's just not as fun or do you find that they tend to be more exhausting and fatiguing overall? Oh, that's a good question. I, I think I'm going to say exhausting and fatiguing. And when I was usually when I was in those phases of the programs, that's when I was just like, if stress is running high, I feel like it's too much. Yeah. In, when I'm in the higher reps. I love, I live for a good five by three or five by five. Your intuition is very good 
Um, so high reps stresses uh, the body more than low reps do. Now, low reps tend to st can stress the joints and the central nervous system, depending how strong the person is. But higher reps, if you look at the total volume, which is uh, sets times reps times weight, uh, you know, if I did 30 reps with 135 pounds, that's more volume than one rep with 500 pounds. Um, and, it, and, it, and it definitely exhausts the body and fatigues the body more. So I have a suggestion for you, if that's the case, cut the volume in half when you go into those high rep phases. So when you get into phase three of MAPS Anabolic, instead of doing three sets of a, an exercise, do one and see how you feel. And you may find that your body starts to respond uh, phenomenally to the higher reps again. It's just you had to calculate, you had to uh, basically account for the total volume. Um, so, and I don't necessarily talk about this because most people aren't as in tune with their body as you are. You haven't worked out as consistently as you. And then people just avoid it because oh, I don't like it. And that's when I encourage people to, to, to kind of push through and try it out. But your intuition is right. So if you go into another high rep phase, cut the volume in half and then see how you feel. And you just may find that the, you start to see the benefit, um, from those phases again. So a couple of things, couple of things for me. One, we'll have Doug send over maps 15. So you yeah. have it. I think that's just so you get the structure. Yeah, yeah. Just so you have it. I think, it, I think so you have some value to, to go through that Two, uh, you're in a place right now that I, I was always trying to get my clients to. So, you know, you're, you're doing incredible, right? And so anything that I think we say right now, take a little bit with a grain of salt, because I don't, I, I think that it's you, what you're doing, learning to balance it out, listen to your body, uh, you know, splitting up anabolic, nothing's wrong with that. Like you, you're also a mom, you're also an entrepreneur, you found incredible balance. And so we're, we're kind of nitpicking here to try and, and give some advice. But I think where you're at is a phenomenal place. And really when it comes to leaning out and, uh, you know, getting, getting in more shape as far as body fat percentage, that's going to come from diet. What you're doing training wise, whether you're running our maps 15 or you're kind of bouncing around like you're currently doing right now, that's, you're going to be fine. Like that's totally fine where you're going. It's all going to be in how you diet. Now there is some value in choosing maybe a program of ours that is really different than what you would normally do. So like in, and, and, and leaning into, Oh, I don't ever train like a, you know, like the strong man competitor, or I've never done like a power lifting, you know, you know, circuit or whatever. Like, so if you haven't done things like that, there is some value to that because it's a, being a novel stimulus. So you might see faster results, but all in all, I think you're doing incredible with the way you're training. Yeah, I mean that's where my brain goes to. It's like um, you 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 found that sort of sweet spot in terms of like doing uh, more of the five by five, five by three kind of protocol. And I'm definitely can relate and I have the same uh, type of uh, uh, love for that type of training. However, I try to challenge myself still, uh, so that way you know. I can respond a little bit differently, give my body new stimulus. Uh, so something like a two in terms of like volume and not being too stressful, like more on the body weight side, more on the, you know, rubber band side uh, might be a good option for that to build volume and, and, you know, get some conditioning there and some muscle endurance. Um, so just, you know, consider that in terms of like something to kind of weave in and out of to come back and give your body kind of a new stimulus. Yeah. Whitney, I want to talk about the getting leaner just for a second. Do you know, do you have a general idea of what your body fat percentage is? No, I'm going to guess high twenties. I'm five foot one and I'm down to 134 from 140. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know... I know that I'm not, I, I lost a lot of muscle mass over the past couple of years, um, was super addicted to exercise and a competitive CrossFitter for a while, mm. then switched that, went hardcore in the yoga direction and mm. kind of broke up with CrossFit and then now back at the gym, but I'm really having to start and then had a couple surgeries and things go on since then. So I've had to really start at square one. So I know that I'm on a higher body fat percentage because my strength is nowhere what it used to be. Okay. Mm. So there's two ways you could approach this. And one way I think is a lot better. First off, you look healthy to me. Um, you look like you're to put a good body, your body weight at your height, the fact that you lift weights, 
you're probably in the mid twenties. I was gonna say you don't look high twenties to me. No, so you're, no. you're probably would, in the mid twenties, which is a, mid to lower. Yeah, which is a great place to be. It's a very healthy, fit uh, place to be. There's two uh-huh. ways you can approach this. You mentioned you're you're not as strong. You lost some muscle. One yeah. way is to get leaner by cutting calories. The other way is to get leaner by building muscle. Okay. Remember, body fat percentage is a percentage of your overall body mass, your overall body weight. So if like right now, if I were to snap my fingers and put five pounds of muscle on you, but you kept your total body fat pounds the same, you're now leaner, okay? Yes. I think that's a better approach. I really do. I think if you're tracking and you have an idea of where your calories are, your protein intake is, if you're hitting your protein targets, I would reverse diet you and just try to get stronger and throw your scale away. Take your scale and stop I, I think that's yourself. a no brainer. That's since, the way to do it. Since you meant now that you gave us that information yeah. that you, you are not as strong as what you were. That's the beautiful part about that is the body remembers that. So to get back there will be a lot easier than to just trying to cut calories and lean out body fat percentage that way. So you, it would be way more advantageous for you just to reverse diet and go get strong. Like that and you're going to see the yep. change in the physique that you probably want. So I think that's a, a no-brainer piece of advice. Yeah, and that's ideal because I am a a stress not eater. Mm, so mm. I need to be focusing on my diet because if it's a stressful time then I just forget mm. to eat. I'm not the other way around, right? So yeah. I have been trying to focus on always, you know, bringing good quality protein choices and veggies and increasing because I know that my calories are also playing a factor in me being able to build the strength too. Well, here, start with this. If you're not doing this already, uh, okay. with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, eat 40 grams of protein uh, with each meal. So, and, and eat that first. So figure out what 40 grams looks like and make that with breakfast, lunch. That'll give you at least 120 grams of protein a day which is going to hit your protein targets. Um, and, and let's start there. And then just try to get stronger. And don't okay. weigh yourself. Don't worry about the scale. Uh, look, I've known many women at 5'1 to weigh 10 to 12 pounds heavier than you who were shredded because of the muscle <laughs> and the size looked great and all that stuff. So your body weight, I wouldn't even worry about that. I would look at strength, hit those protein targets. Let's see if we can get your calories up much better approach than trying to cut your calories uh, to try to get leaner. And your programming that you're doing is fine. Yeah. So especially since that you have the self-awareness that you would probably tend to stick in five by five. So as long as you interrupt that, you know, by bouncing out of it for a while, then coming back, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you. You How's got it. That? We're good. <laughs> <laughs> she got any Thanks. questions? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but- She's a little gymnast, this one. So oh, yeah. all she's right. benching, squatting, overhead pressing, and wow. all those things already. Wow. Awesome. Man, Good job, Charlotte. Way ahead of that's the curve. Right. Good job, Charlotte. Thank you so much, Whitney, <laughs> yeah. for calling us. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. You enjoy your day. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day. Bye. I love questions like that. I love moms like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing a great job. Um, you know, with everything. The the you know, the the she's she obviously has a relationship with exercise that can go in the negative she's experienced that before knows she recognized that. it yeah though, which is great yeah exactly um but you know i hope women listening really understood what i said with the other approach to getting leaner mm-hmm. it's a better approach if she gained muscle and got leaner she it would be much more sustainable she'd have a better hormone profile she'd be stronger she'd have more energy than if she just tried to drop weight and get leaner in that way it's a much, much better, it's a healthier, more sustainable, and forget the scale because people get hung up on the scale, especially women. If you looked at her with more muscle and leaner versus just lighter and leaner, the more muscle leaner look looks better. Mm-hmm. It just looks better. Yeah. It's Every when the time. scale shows up, it's when people freak out, so- well, when she made that point that she was weaker, that was like, yeah, that's when I knew that right, was right. like a, yeah. that became a no brainer yeah. piece of advice. Our next caller is Michael from Sweden. Michael. What's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, <clears throat> thanks for taking my call, um, and uh, thanks for your content. I um, I started listening to you guys a couple of months ago. Uh, I always had a hard time finding like trainers here in Sweden, so I really enjoy listening to you because you really seem to know what you're talking about. Thank you. All right, mostly Justin and I, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll just jump uh, straight into my question. Okay. If that's right. 
Um, I, I, I listen, listened a lot to you guys and uh, sometimes you mentioned this uh, about burnout, burning out. And I actually had that happen to me and like two months ago that I had a pretty bad burnout from uh, doing way too much, like working out too much, working too much and having kids, you know, the whole life situation. So I was wondering uh, how you guys would recommend someone like me to get back to training and also maybe how to balance life better to not risk burning out again. Okay. We wrote a program just for this. Yeah. Well, before we get into that, Michael, uh, I'm reading your question. And if you don't mind, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about the details because there's, yeah. you know, there's burnout over training and then there's what you experienced. So in your note, you said that you, you got so bad that you couldn't even stand for shorter durations because your body felt completely spent from high stress and overtraining. Mm. And then you, you mm. found out from some doctor appointments that you were burnt out. So let's, yeah, exactly. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, what did the doctor appointments test and what did they show? Uh, they did uh, a lot of tests because I, I had a lot of, uh, like, um, uh, inflammation in my chest. So they, they thought it was something more serious, but it turned out it wasn't thankfully. Uh, they, they, they just, uh, they did like blood works and all that. And they said that you're fine, but, uh, you're, you're burned out and you need to start listening to your body and, uh, not to do so much as I am uh, doing. Okay. And you say inflammation in your chest, was this heart inflammation or was it the chest cavity? No, the chest muscle, the, the, um, okay. uh, the muscles. Okay. And did you get inflammatory markers tested? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Because, um, well, let's talk about what got you here because this is a very extreme, uh, this would be a very extreme level of burnout. Yeah. Um, th I mean, this sounds like potentially, I mean, it also well, depends on how, well, I mean, this is, what does it look like? This yeah, could be rabdo, like? you know, yeah. I don't know what they tested, right? Yeah, but so they would have said, they would have said something like not that. Not necessarily. That's why I'm asking what they the might test not showed. Have looked for it. Because sometimes what doctor, I don't know if the, I'm not saying it's what your doctor did, but sometimes what doctors do is they don't know. So they just say, Oh, you're, you're just overtrained. Yeah, th th what this sounds like to me and correct me if I'm wrong. sounds like you went to the doctor cause you probably felt so fatigued and burnt out and he'd ran, they ran a bunch of blood work, bunch of tests on you. Notice that your chest was probably really inflamed, probably from overtraining like crazy, uh, and told you, you need to calm down. Is that what happened? Yeah. But let, let, yeah, basically. Okay. But what led to this? Because this is not, um, uh, this is, uh, not well, I, I'm one of those, like, I'm pretty high, high uh, achiever, if you know what to say, that uh, I I, um, I push myself really hard. I, I guess I don't listen so much to my body because I, you know, I follow all this mentality that you should, like, if you should train even if you're tired or, you know, the whole David Goggins thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. David Goggins. Uh, but that didn't work out for me <laughs> like it does for him. What did your workouts like. What did your workouts look like? What did you do? Yeah, was, how was your sleep and what was the rest of your life right. stress? I need more details. Uh, usually I um, I do like an upper lower split with uh, where I do the compound movements and I add some uh, secondary like where I th think I need more work. Uh, like if I'm weak in the knees or um, stuff like that and then I I do that three times a day, uh, a week, I mean, and then I maybe run twice a week. Um, and then I, like, I work uh, like nine to five. And then when I, I usually have lots to do at home as well, because I like to help out with everything. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so this, from what you're explaining and how you felt and the kind of inflammation you felt and the fact that you couldn't stand... Um, I'm going to recommend that you get more testing and go see a specialist. How do you feel now, by the way? Uh, now I've been, uh, I, I stopped uh, training and started to rest a lot. So now I'm, I'm pretty much back on my feet again. Do you feel back so to normal? I, is back on my feet yeah. feel good or is that just back on your feet? Yeah, like how's your sleep? Yeah. Do you feel normal? Is libido okay? Appetite? Energy still there? Like 90% uh, back, I would say. That's normal. Okay. So, okay. so we'll talk about the exercise. Um, and then I still think you should go see, um, cause you might've experienced rhabdo where the muscle mm -hmm. damage gets so bad that it overwhelms your body's ability to get rid of waste, uh, product byproducts. 
could also be something else that's going on. So what you're experiencing, what you explained in your note, I've never seen with somebody except for someone who goes and literally destroys yeah. themselves for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. yeah. Triathlete or cross. Yeah. I, I, um, they have some theories because I also have like, uh, right before that I had some extremely high stress in my life from, because I also have my own company and then I had some uh, bad stuff happen. And okay. then I also, I, I had a, a cold that they thought might be COVID and then maybe I had this, what they call post COVID. Um, and then I went to the gym and did deadlifts. And after that, it, uh, <laughs> it was, um, uh, I was there. Gotcha. Did, okay. So, um, I, I definitely want you to go see a specialist. I want you to test your inflammatory markers, look at your kidney function, your liver function mm -hmm. and a hormone profile. Then with exercise, it, it, I mean, this is going to sound very general, but less is better and slow is better. I think a program like MAPS 15 would be an appropriate way yeah. to start. Um, and if you don't have that, we'll send that to you. And it's literally 15 minutes every day. And I think that would be an appropriate place to start. You'll still get stronger. You should still see results. But I wouldn't be satisfied without further testing. I'm yeah, still not satisfied yeah, with what you're explaining. It. You know, Michael, you've only been listening for a couple of months, so maybe you've, you haven't heard me say this on the podcast before, but the goal is to do the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change. And that, that's really hard for people to wrap their brain around that because it's different in almost every other aspect of your life, your business and you know, education, the harder you work, the more results you get with fitness, with body composition change, losing body fat, building muscle. It is not like that. And in fact, a better strategy for not only faster results, but long-term results is approaching the gym as I'm going to do as little as I can to elicit change. And all you have to do to elicit change is a little more than what you did last week. If you were doing nothing last week, then a set of squats will elicit change. So think like that. Approach your training like that. The goal is to go in there and actually and not th – this is the reason I love David Goggins because I think he's a great motivator and things like that. But there's a reason why we haven't brought him on the show and interviewed him because we think it's the opposite message that we're constantly trying to teach our people is that it's not about suffering. Yes, there's this. There is a, a mental thing for people that are in very special yeah. <laughs> mental strength. That's a different category. Yeah, but somebody who's trying to be healthy and fit, it's a terrible approach for health and fitness. And so, as much as I like the guy, I don't like the messaging for our health and fitness community because I come from a total opposite camp, which is what I said to you, which is doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And so, that needs to be your mindset as you approach this. Maps fifteen, I think was written with that kind of thought process is going in there doing two exercises a day, you know, a compound lift, two compound lifts, and then getting out of the gym, not trying to crush it, just slowly build on that. Yeah. But we'll send you mass 15. That'll give you the program. And then if you need more specifics with testing, I would look at C reactive protein. I would look at a one C. I would look at kidney filtration, liver, uh, function. I would look at, uh, um, creatinine, levels uh, in the blood. Um, and if it, a functional medicine practitioner might be someone good to find. If you can't find one there, we have a free forum on Facebook called MP Holistic Health, and you could just join it. It's free. And there's functional mm -hmm. medicine practitioners that are, are much more qualified than I am um, to that could direct you uh, for further testing. But I think that's a good idea, Michael, because yep. what you're explaining is not typical and it's not even typical of people that overtrain. So um, there, there's something else or there was something else going on. And um, I, I think it's important to, to look deeper. Yeah, Doug's going to send you the Mass 15 program. And then I, I'd love to see you in our private forum also. Uh, so you can kind of keep up, let us know what's going on. So we can probably even better advise you as we find out more information from the doctors. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, I also had, a, like, I have a really hard time from what you're saying, like, to know when it's okay to rest and not. Mm -hmm. I usually mm -hmm. choose to push myself rather than rest. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like the balance. I think it's really hard to find. Just just remember what I just remember what I said to you. It's yeah. it's different mm -hmm. than almost everything else in your life. It's not the more work, the harder you go, the more results you get. I know that's how it is in almost every other aspect it's of our life. It's the right lives. amount. Yeah. Yeah. And and the Find right amount. Close. 
for every person is, is very unique and different. And if you have a high stress job and you got a lot on your plate, you you have to be even less than a normal person. This is so. where programming really helps with that, you know, to, to be able to find that right dose, uh, to follow it to the T, you know, don't second guess it, just, you know, trust the process, see what it does for you first. I think you just need to believe what it can do for you first. Yeah. Yeah, great advice. Thanks, guys. You got it. Thanks, All right, Michael. Michael. Stay right. in touch, Thanks brother. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks a lot. I hope you see somebody. I don't like yeah. the, the the I don't like the way the explanation. It's alarming for sure. Yeah, I mean, in, in, okay, and I, I was uh, on point. I worked. I lifted weights three days a week and did and ran twice a week. That would not cause. Oh. 99% of the time would That's not like cause super intense what happened. And then he mentioned that he had long COVID and all these other things mm -hmm. and who knows what's going on. Um, yeah. The part that seems uh, that he wrote and he didn't say, but he wrote in there that even the shorter workouts were still bothering him, which and what, is kind of strange. What annoys yeah. me sometimes with doctors is, Oh, you're just, you're just doing too much. And then, so I asked him specifics. What about this? They didn't know. They make quick assumptions. Yeah. Yeah. There's no further testing. If I was a doctor and he came to me and I looked at that, I'd be like, well, you're middle-aged man. You look otherwise healthy. Yeah, you could be working out too hard, but you have trouble standing yeah, that's for short not periods of time. Normal. We got to look a little deeper um, and, and kind of see what's uh, what's going on. So, um, and then severe chest inflammation. I mean, it could be rhabdo. Look, you could get so much muscle damage, it overwhelms your body. People get hospitalized for that, yeah. and they, they do. Mm -hmm. But the doctors would have seen, unless they're completely inept, they would have seen his CK levels at extraordinary yeah, levels. Yeah, they would have seen something. In which though. case, they would have, unless they didn't test for it, is what I'm saying. Mm. In, w in which yeah. case, they would have, you know, put him on Seems IV. And, but something else is going on. I feel like a, a client, or I mean, a, a patient that comes in and complains of those things, that would be like one of the first things that you would test. Wouldn't I mean, that's it's become common with CrossFit and stuff like that. It's become more popular. So I feel like yeah. if you came in and you're talking about your workout making you feel this way, I would think that's like a first box that most doctors potentially. Right. But no, even rhabdo is right. rare. It's not super common. Yeah. Um, it's pretty hard to get, uh, you know, to, to get someone in that a place like that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, definitely look deeper. I know sometimes, oftentimes the answer is you're doing too much, but, it, sometimes the, you, it, the like you're doing an amount that well, it might be a little too much, but holy cow, I'm so crushingly tired that I can't move yeah. or I can't stand. stand yeah, eh, that's... You got to look a little deeper. This so. question so highlights though what we've been saying for so many years on this podcast mm -hmm. that you know we get flack for sometimes in the in, with the hardcore fitness community is that I think that messaging is so terrible yeah. for most people. It really is. I yeah. get. I get how it hypes us all up. Like I get hyped up, dude. When I, when totally. I listen to David Goggins, like it gets me all. Well, yeah, naked. someone like this here is like, oh my god, I can barely stand. And then David Goggins like, you're a pussy. And he's like, I, I guess I'm a pussy. I'll just yeah. push harder. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's not that's like yeah. gonna be that's not the answer. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Look, if you like Mind Pump, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump. Justin, I'm at Mind Pump. Sal and Adam is at Mind Pump. Adam. 